<coughs> Pardon my emotions. When I was a young boy, I was picked up a pretty good bit. And uh, nobody ever complimented me for anything. And I can tell you what, since I've come to the Lord, everybody compliments the Lord that's in me. Amen. And, and it's, it's humbling to be a part of this kingdom. It's humbling to be a part of the family of God and to see how merciful God is on your own personal life. And, and what he can actually take a person and actually change them so radically and, and, and make a life that's being able to be radiated out of your life, which all we do is radiate darkness apart from Jesus. Yes. But in him, there's life. That there's hope for people. You know, when I, I came into this 22 years ago, walking with the Lord, I kind of grew up in that church. And I had always seen such a, uh, a fakeness in people. You know, just people trying to make themselves holier looking. Yeah. People that just try to, you know, put on a, a, some sort of a, a, an air when they get in the pulpit so that they sound like some superstar. And, and it's like I, I knew that person was looking for attention. You know, notice me or look at me. And then the people in the church is like, no, notice me. And other people are like, no, notice me, notice me, notice me. And, and really, they weren't really wanting you to notice them and what God had done in them. But they just want the platform, you know. And, and there's such a fakeness in that. And if I could say this morning, guys, everybody in this room has seen enough of that. Yeah. This, this world has seen enough of religion. Eupora has seen enough of religious minded, religious sour, whatever. It, it's it's disgusting. Religion yeah. is gross, guys. Yeah. And people aren't attracted to that at all. They run from it. Yeah. You, you, you tell somebody when you're traveling, they say, what do you do for a living? You say, well, I'm an evangelist. And immediately you've just lost a conversation because, <laughs> you know, years ago, I believe if you'd have told somebody you were an evangelist, they'd be like, how you doing, sir? You know, they would respect the God that's in your life. But today, it's not respected at all. And I, and I believe it's because man has gotten in the way so much. Yeah. And the Spirit of God has been pushed out of everything. All the way to the point where now they just open churches just to, you know, see how much money they can get in. Or see, you know, it's a job. I can tell you, this is not a job. This is a life. Amen. Amen. This is a life that we get to enjoy, you know. Every one of you I've watched work in this church through the years and even on this since we've been here, nobody pays you to do that. You do it because you love God and you're doing everything as unto God Amen. so that people could see God in you. And look, guys, I would say all the time, let's pray for ourselves that everything that we do, we're doing it in the name of Jesus and we're doing it unto Jesus. Everything is spiritual. Everything that we do is spiritual. You know, it's not... You, you're not, you know, if you're mopping the floors, that's spiritual. If you're vacuuming the carpet, that's spiritual. If, if you're helping hang lights, it's spiritual. If you're working in your workplace and you're digging dirt and dragging around all over the place, and, and it's all spiritual, guys, because this life is now a spirit-filled life that we get to enjoy with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I pray this morning, guys, that you would be encouraged. Thank you for your kindness uh, towards Tammy and I for so many years now. And I can tell you what, I love your pastor. I thank God for him. I, I thank God for his heart to want to see people grow. He's not one of those people that stand up there and just try to look good or hope that he can, you know, pass a Sunday and somebody will pat him on the back. He knows he's not right. He knows he doesn't do the right things, but he knows that there's a God that has put something within his life. And I just want to stand and I just want to shepherd people. I just want to, I just want to help people alone. And do you know that every one of us are sort of like a shepherd in the world? You know, when Jesus looked at that world and he saw all the people scattered, they were like all just a whole bunch of sheep running through the city. And every sheep is going their own way. They don't know what they're doing. They're dying from disease. As you look around the world, that's what we're seeing today. Yeah. Amen. Just, just sheep scared, scattered, running. Going crazy, you know, beating themselves up, running through barbed wire fences and getting claw marks on them because they're so afraid. They don't know where they're going or what they're doing. Well, guys, I'm going to tell you, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the shepherd of this whole world lives in you. Yeah. And look, when you come out of this building into that world out there, that world is looking for somebody to lead them in the right direction. Yeah. 
Yeah. And it's a shame that ministers and people of God have been so pushed out of the picture. You know, and I believe it's because of religion yeah. over the years. But I'm going to tell you what. We serve a God that is greater than that principality. Yeah. He's greater than that deception. And I can tell you what. This hour we live, bro. I'm like you. I'm believing for revival. Yeah. I'm believing that God will take what the enemy has tried to destroy. And God is going to work it out for good. Because, hey, you're not going to pull a rug over God's head. No. And sometimes we see stuff and we're like, well, why didn't God stop that? Hey, God knows what he's doing. Yeah, he he's going to put a stop to it. Yeah. The folly is going to be exposed. I That's promise. Right. You can mark yeah. it down. Light always exposes darkness. It will make it manifest. And it will all surface up. And I'm going to tell you in this hour... The true born again believer, the remnants of this world that are truly born again, spirit filled, that world is going to see us. Yeah. Come on now. So that world is going to see us. Thank you, Pastor, for your kind words. And thank you all for your kindness. I love you. And like our brother was saying, everybody in here, if you're born again there this morning, you are a trophy. Amen. That Jesus is going to hold. He's already holding you up for the world to see. This one belongs to me. Yeah. And when he gets before his father, look, all those crowns and trophies will be laid at the feet of Jesus. And he'll say, look what I was able to do with somebody that was so messed up and wretched. Amen. Amen. Aren't you glad to be a child of God this Amen. morning? Let's give him praise. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I'm going to draw a picture for you today, and I, I pray that God would give me uh, the ability to do this this morning. I'm trying to tie last night's message in to this morning, and I'm like Brother uh, brother uh, Pogue here this morning. I, I, I'm, I don't know, always know what to say. I don't know what, how God wants to move, but I know that he's going to do something special here this morning and draw a picture for us to get an understanding of your life in this body. Amen. If you're born again, you have entered into the body of Jesus Christ. You have been baptized spiritually into this body by one spirit. We're all baptized into one body. We've now become the children of God. We've become joint heirs with Christ Jesus. Y'all understand, Amen. our pastor teaches that all the time. You have become a child of God. Our sister was saying the other day, look, God keeps telling us that over and over because I think sometimes... He realizes that we forget that. Yeah. I mean, you can say this morning, I am a child of the living God. Yes. And I am part of this work. And this dispensation, this time frame, this bracket of time that we live in right now, guys, we live in the greatest time. Yeah. We ought to be the happiest people. Amen. We, we live in, in a world that's dark, but we are the light of this world. Amen. Yeah. And yeah. God is doing something in Eupora. God is doing something in this Calvary Chapel Church. I'm telling you, there's life in here. There's hope in here. You are being grown up and strengthened so much. And guys, look, I know you're affecting this town. I know that you are. And I can't wait to watch and see what Amen. God Amen. is going to finish right here yes. in this spot. Uh, you know, in this hour that we're working in. Amen? Amen. So anyway, I want you to turn in your Bibles for a moment back to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians 1. And we're going to look at verse 15 again. I want to just look at this for a moment as we start. Ephesians chapter 1. Verse 15. This is Paul speaking. We're going to look at a few scriptures today, so keep your Bibles handy. I mean, if you love your Bible, amen? amen. It is the Word of God. I'm thankful for it. Verse 15, wherefore, this is Paul saying, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and love unto all the saints, I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Here's what he's praying. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom, revelation in the knowledge of him, that the eyes of your understanding would be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ Jesus when he raised him up from the dead. And he has set him at the own right hand in 
the heavenly places. Far above. This is the king we serve, guys. Far above all principality and power. Far above might and dominion. Far above every name that is named. Not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And God, listen, has put all things under his feet Amen. and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. That's you. If you're born again this morning, which is his body, the fullness. Listen, guys, the body of Christ, which is the fullness of him that filleth all in all. And continue to read verse one, chapter two. And you, if that's you this morning, and you has he quickened. Who were dead in your trespasses and in sin. Wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world. According to the prince of the power of the air. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Among whom all of us, every one of us. We had our lifestyle or our conversation in times past. In the lust of your flesh. We were filling the desires of our flesh. And of the mind. And we were by nature. Because we were born of Adam, every one of us in this room, by nature we are children of wrath, or were children of wrath, even as the rest of the world. But God, our pastor said it, I say it all the time, and I love it. But God, in the midst of your trouble, in the midst of your running from God, in the midst of your horrible, disobedient, rebellious lifestyle, but God, who is rich in mercy, aren't you glad he's merciful today? Yes. Yes. For his great love where he loved us. That's you. God is merciful to you. God loves you. Even when you were dead in your sins. God loved you. And God had mercy on you. Why? He sent Jesus Christ to be the propitiation for your sin. That's how much he loved you. That's how much mercy he showed toward you. And listen. When you gave your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And the day that you were born again. But verse 5 says, even when you were dead in your sins, he quickened us together with Christ. By the grace of God, we've been saved here this morning. And listen, he has raised us up together and he has made us the born again believer. He has made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Guys, that is right now. Yes. Spiritually, we are seated in heavenly places. We have become the children of God. We are joint heirs of Christ Jesus. Everything that belongs to him belongs to you. Can I get an amen? amen. Everything. Can you remember? Can you write that down in your Bible so that you don't forget it? I'm just like you. I forget it. That's why I keep preaching it. I'm actually preaching to myself this morning. And this is what he's done. He's seated us in heavenly places. And look at verse 7. This is why. Why did he save you? Why has he raised you up? Why has he quickened you? Why has he seated us in heavenly places? Why has all principality and power and dominion and might been put up underneath us? Because we're in Christ. So everything that Christ is, God has put us in that same place with Jesus Christ. So all of that has become his footstool. All of that has now become our footstool. We're seated in heavenly places right now. Do you understand that, church? Amen. That's where you reside right now. Your body is here on this earth, but your spiritual man is seated in heavenly places. We're talking about a spirit man, a spirit woman here this morning. Your inner man has been seated in heavenly places. How? By faith in Jesus Christ and the grace that he has bestowed towards us. Amen. And here's why, verse 7, that in the days to come or the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace. And his kindness towards us. Aren't you glad? He's given grace to you. And he's showing you that exceeding riches of his grace. And his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. For by grace you've been saved through faith. It is not by works lest anyone in this room could ever boast in it. And we have become his workmanship created unto good works in Christ Jesus. That's who you are this morning. You are the church of the living God. And every time you enter into this building, we are entering in 
to a fellowship one with another. Yeah. When you're out in the world and you're going from house to house and you're eating with people, you're in fellowship one with another. The reason we all feel like we've known each other forever and we get along so well is by the Spirit of God. We have what they call kindred spirits. We're now giving and receiving. We've become into a relationship not only with God, but each other. There's a relationship that God has made us. Now look around this room. Everybody turn around. Look forward. Look backward. Everybody in this room, if you're part of this church, God has brought you into this place. Amen. I've had Amen. Father around this room and asked every one of you, do you believe that God has brought you to Cal Calvary Chapel in, in, in New Orleans, Mississippi to be in fellowship with this body? You would say, Amen. 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 Aren't you glad for that? Yes. Aren't you glad for that? Some of you say, well, I wish I was going to church over there, <laughs> over here, or maybe I could come down and go to church down in Baton Rouge. So wonderful. Hey, I'm glad I didn't come up here. It's so wonderful. Yes, I, I come from a church everybody wants to go to. I'll tell you what, I love coming here. <laughs> Y'all are like family. It's no different back home. Still got troubles, still got problems, still got humans, still got sheep. <laughs> still got worries, pastor battles, things, and people battle things. Yeah. It's all the same. Yes. So you think, well, I'm going to get out of one church, try to get into another church. So Because I'm trying to get to a church that doesn't have any problems. Yeah. Well, as soon as you get there, the problems are going to yeah, start. That's right. <laughs> that, that's take it to the bank. All right? Because we just, we mess things up. Every one of us. We're not perfect people. But I tell you what, there's one that is perfect. Yeah. Right. And that perfect one has literally seated every yeah. single one of you in heavenly places right now. In Christ Jesus. Now I want to draw a picture today. How many of you have ever been to Colorado or somewhere, maybe Gatlinburg, um, somewhere, maybe Branson, Missouri, where you see the beautiful mountains? And you go up, everybody been on top of a mountain at least once in your life, and you've looked out over a plain or a plateau, and man, the beauty, the mountains are gorgeous, the clouds. You know, the, 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 the blue sky. And then you've got rivers in the backdrops. And you've got, if you do in the fall, it's really pretty. You've got all the different trees with all the different colors on it. And man, you just sit there and your eyes just keep staring at it. Y'all know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And then the first thought that comes to your head, man, I want to move here. And I want to build a house <laughs> right here. And I want to sit on my back porch every morning. And I want to look at the gaze, at the beauty of what God has created. While we're sipping on a hot cup of coffee, right? Coffee it would just be good to wake up every morning and go stare at that, right? Well, I'm going to tell you what, it's coming soon when we get snatched up out of here. We're going into a new world where there's no... And I believe God has just given us like a little bit of a peek at what this new heaven and this new earth is going to be like. Oh boy, what a day that's going to be. Amen. We're going to be with Jesus and we're not only going to get to see him. And, and, and live eternally with Him. But we get to enjoy all the things that God really intended for us to enjoy all through this whole world. Yeah. A pastor and I went down to Nepal, and it, it, it's third world, and it is, it is a beautiful country. Uh, we were coming in the airplane, you could see those Himalayan mountains, and man, your jaws just drop. You know, the top half's white, the bottom half's green. It was beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. But I can tell you what, that's just a small vision. Of what God is going to let us see for eternity. Amen? Amen? But when you're standing up there. And you're looking at all that picture there. And you just sit amazed at it. Do you know that that, that picture that you're looking at. Just keeps going and going and going. If you had like a pair of binoculars. And your regular physical eyes. As far as they can see. Forward, left and right. Up and down. You're looking at stuff like the mountains. You're looking at the rivers. You're looking at some of the trees and the colors of the trees. And you can see a little bit of the bark on the trees. And then you get on down to the bottom and you can see the rocks and the small things. And you're like, man, this is beautiful. What if you, your eyes could see down into the river and see the sand and the fish swimming? And then after that, you look at each fish. And every little fish has a particular color, a particular shape. A particular set of eyes, a particular set of scales, and the stripes and the colors would be beautiful. And then if you could go into that a little bit further and see the pigments in the colors that are on the fish. And you look at that under a microscope, you would, you would be amazed again the sight that you see. And if you were to stretch back all the way into space 
and you look at the whole world and all of its creation, it just blows your mind. Your, your, your natural mind and your natural eyes can't perceive it, right? Amen. Yeah. But it's like, wow. Yeah. That's really pretty. Y'all ever watch, uh, what's it called? Earth? Planet Earth? You know, some of these videos that these videographers video stuff that we've never seen before. And you're like, they're using like 10 million K cameras, you know, that we don't have. And they're like, oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. The rivers and all of the things that go. I, I was able to go into the jungle in Honduras one time and another jungle in Peru. And, and in the jungle, it was so lush and so green. And you could just sit in the jungle and you hear all these sounds and you're just gazing at it. And you're like, wow, this is amazing. And then all of a sudden you catch an eye and look, there's a monkey. <laughs> wow, look at that. And then three hours later, a toucan. You know, I thought the Fruit Loop, you know, it doesn't look exactly like the Fruit Loop toucan. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. And the sounds it makes, it's so beautiful. And as a born again believer, I'm looking at that and going, wow, man, that is so pretty. That bird is so beautiful. The sounds, every morning I look forward to coming out and seeing the, the toucan. And then at nighttime, the whole jungle comes alive. It roars at night. Every little creature that makes every weird sound is just like. <sighs> and I'm like, you know what? These, these little bugs and creatures are praising God. Yeah. Wow. They're doing what God created them to do. The trees are doing what God created them to do. Every single bug from every little creepy crawler. Y'all look at some of these pictures in uh, magazines and on the videos of these frogs, you know. And they got the little toes with the little suction cups on them. And they've got all these brilliant colors. That's just one little creature that if you toss him into the jungle and pull back, you'd never see him. And, unless you had some binoculars or a microscope to get close. That's how amazing God is. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. So when you read in Genesis... On the first six days, God created. How many of you know this morning that God is a creator? Yeah. How many you know He is the greatest landscape architect this world's ever seen? Yeah. He is the creator. And that's why we enjoy creating so much. If you draw a picture or if we draw something or if we decorate our homes or do some gardening or whatever. Dress yourselves creatively. Do your hair a creative way. We look at it. We go, wow, that looks really good. You've done all this beautiful work inside this building, and then you sit back and you go, wow, this is good. Yeah. So God made man in his image, right? And so God, when he created, every day it was something new. And at the end of that day, God was pleased. This is good. Amen. And it was good. And it was good. And on the third day, it was good. And so God was creating and then he would look at his creation as he put everything in order. And then he would somewhat brag on himself. And I mean in a very righteous way. This is good. Yeah. Because God is a creator and he loves to create. That's why we like to create. No matter what it is, we look back at something that we've done and we think to ourselves, this is good. Of course, sin takes it to another level and pride gets in there. We're like, yeah, we are the man. Nobody can do it like me. But God never had that any thoughts because God is so pure and righteous and holy. One day we're going to be just like him. Amen. We're going to be like him. We're not going to wrestle pride. But we can say this is good. Yeah. Amen? Amen. I want you to turn in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. While you're turning there, we're part of the body of Christ. We're part of the body of Christ, guys. God has placed churches throughout this world. And in every single church, there is a body of believers in that church. And God puts leadership in that church to help us all to grow. We read or talked a little bit about it in Ephesians chapter 4. How God gives some gifts or some abilities to some people to equip us for the work of the ministry in the church and outside of the church. So we're not tossed around by every wind of doctrine. But we're solid. We're rooted. We know our place in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. So God has done that among you. And every time we gather together under this roof. And we sit under the authority of this word. Whether it's the pastor. The evangelist. Uh, you know a teacher of some sort. Is teaching and instructing and helping us. 
to mature in the Lord Jesus Christ. So we come to that unity of the faith is what the Bible calls it. To a perfect man, unto that perfect stature of the fullness of Christ. That's where we're all getting to. We're not there yet, but we're growing. Aren't you glad this morning? We're growing in that every single day when we gather, we're there to strengthen. God is working in us as a body would be functioning. When you look at our physical bodies, they all function and they're working so that the whole body is healthy. And if you work that body out and you eat good and you exercise a little bit and get some good sunlight in, the body begins to grow, it stays healthy and it functions. And everybody can look at your body and see that it's functioning. And when we don't take care of our bodies, everybody can see that we don't take care of our bodies. Yeah. We're sick, we're down, we're this, we're that, we're slow, we're tired. I can't hardly breathe, I can't walk up the mountain. It's because we're not nurturing this body properly. Yeah. And I can tell you what, God is nurturing His body properly. Amen. He's not a slacker like me. Yeah. He's not a glutton like me. He doesn't do and, and, and torture His body like I do mine. Or you do yours, right? Yep. Because God is perfect and He knows exactly what He's doing. Amen. Because God's orchestrated and God is perfect. He never messes up. So by you being in here in Eupora, this is where you live. This is the dispensation of time. This is the church building that God has given you. But this is the body right here that God has congregated you with. Now when we go out into that world, there's another body that's congregating. There are other churches in this area that are good churches. They're growing. And they're about the same business that you're about. Praise God. The laborers are well needed. If you've got 150 chairs and only two people, I can tell you what, it would have been unloaded a whole lot faster if you'd have had 30 people doing it. Yeah. And then the 30 people wouldn't have had to work so hard. They'd just grab one or two chairs and it's over with. Where you've got two people, you're grabbing 50 or 100 chairs per person to get the job done. Y'all understand? Amen. So workers are needed. We're not out there to be the only church. All right, We're all in this together. We're working together. When you look into the jungle, if it only had uh, 80 bugs out there, where's the other 350,000 million bugs that could be out there to make that picture perfect? Well, they're out there. Amen. There are believers all over this world and God is functioning through them right now, just like he's doing here in this room. Amen. Amen. First Corinthians, if you would, for a moment, turn there. I want to look at a couple of verses here pertaining the body of Christ and how it functions. I want you to look at verse 4 in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now we're talking about the body of Christ and I want to talk a little bit about the gifts. Okay, we, we, looked, we talked about Ephesians 4 where God gave some gifts, the fivefold ministry, people call it the, 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 the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher. And then God gives other gifts. In, in 1 Corinthians 12, it says this in verse 4. Now, there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. Now, I want you to really stay with me and walk with me through this. There are now diversities or different gifts. Is that word diversities means different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are differences of operations, but it is the same God. Which worketh all in all. You're getting a picture of the jungle a little bit. God's the creator, right? But the manifestation of the spirit. That means the, the, the ability to see. The seeing of the spirit or the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man. And we're talking about mankind. So that's boy and girl, man and woman. The, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every person. Why? To profit all. So the manifestation of the Spirit of God has been placed upon every one of your lives in this room and every life of every believer that's in this world. And the reason that that Spirit is given to every man is to profit all of us. Spirit of God is not given to me, not only His Spirit, but giftings in the spirit, it's not for me, it's for you. Amen. It's, it's to help you, it's to profit you. The giftings in your life is there to profit all of us. Amen. It's not just I'm profiting one, you're profiting back the other. All those gifts are to profit all. When you stand on that pinnacle and you look out across that land, you see all of the beauty. Every single part that you're looking at is profitable to make that picture a jaw-dropping picture. 
And when the world looks at it, they're like, oh my gosh. But if you were to take everything away and just leave one tree standing out of there, and you took all the mountains out of the picture, took all of the rivers out of the picture, all of the trees and plants and everything else, and just left one tree out there, you'd be like, wow, that's a nice tree. But boy, if you could add all that stuff in one moment, you'd be like, whoa, I didn't realize all of that other stuff was there. It would blow your mind. You get a picture of it? So the gift and the manifestation is given to profit all. Verse 8. For to one is given by the Spirit. Just remember that. It's not coming from you. It's not the pastor telling you. It is by the Spirit. So to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. To another person, I would say by the Spirit, the word of knowledge. It says by the same Spirit. To another, faith. By the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing. By the same Spirit. To another person, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, different kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But all these work that one and same self spirit. In other words, all of these work and they're working together by the same spirit. But it is God, it goes on to say, comma, Dividing to every man severally as he wills. Not that you would will it, but how he wills. So let's back up so we don't, we don't lose track of what God's saying to us here. In the body of Christ, one person at any given time is given a word of wisdom. Another person at any given time is given the word of knowledge. By the same spirit, this is happening. To another person, faith is given at any given time. To another, gifts of healing, any given time. To another, the working of miracles at any given time. To another, prophecy at any given time. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, different kinds of tongues, interpretations of tongues. But look, all these work that one and same self spirit. And it is God, the spirit of God, dividing to every man as he wills to do it. I'm going to stop there and just give you an understanding. When we gather in this room multiple times a week maybe, when you're here together, or maybe you're in the world somewhere gathered with the body of Christ, at any given time, God could give any one of you a word of wisdom. Yeah. Now, it's like you don't have the gift of the wisdomer, and you're going around just giving wisdom all the time. These particular gifts are sovereignly dis distributed as he wills, Amen. which means at any given time, I could use anybody in this room to lay hands on another and that person be healed. Yeah. That would be the gift of healing working through your life Amen. by that same self spirit. Amen. So that God is glorified and you're not walking around. I've got this healing ministry. I'm the healer. Yeah. Now it's all about you. If I could just get to healing preacher such and such, I'd be healed. Now I don't belittle people that have giftings uh, where God would use an individual more than once to heal people. But that gift of healing is not to one person. That gift of healing is sovereignly distributed at any given time as God would place that gift. Amen. That way God gets the glory and yeah. you don't. Amen. Okay? That's why we're not saying, oh my gosh, <laughs> you know, healer such and such. We just need... To have him in our life at all times. And you know if I could just give people to be him. He'd be all, they'd all be okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. We need to get people to Jesus. That's right. Amen. And you're going to be okay. Amen. Alright. So God distributes that as he wills. The gift of knowledge. Okay. A tongue. An interpretation of that tongue. Alright. These are gifts that God gives. A gift of faith. Maybe someone. I'll take Nathan. We talked about you last night. There was a period of time that your faith was very weak. But God gave somebody in this room, or more than one people, sovereignly as he wills, at any given time, the ability to have great faith to come and speak something into your life that they believed really strongly, and it really ministered to you and brought hope and faith to you. Amen. God sovereignly distributes that as he wills, so that it profits everybody in the room and it's not all just on one person. Amen? Amen. So God is distributing these particular gifts. Look at verse 12. For as the body is one member 
and has many members, and all the members of that body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. You're looking at the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 13, for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. We're talking about the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whether you be a Jew or a Gentile, whether you be bond or free, and I'll add this, whether you be from West Monroe or Gonzales or Eupora or Colorado, listen, it doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter if you've been grown up and won this or won that. Listen, we're all baptized into one body, whether you're a Jew or a Gentile, whether you're bond or free, doesn't matter what, what, what nationality you are, we have all been made to drink of one spirit. Aren't you glad for that? Amen. That way we all become one in Jesus Christ. Yeah. Now you don't have all the differences. In Christ Jesus, there's no race. Human race only. There's no different, you know, different color kind. I'm this, I'm that. Look, we're all the same in the body of Christ. We're all been made to drink of that same cup in that one spirit. For the body is not one member, but the body is many members. If the foot shall say, well, because I'm not a hand, am I not really part of the body? If, if, if Verse 16, if the ear shall say, because I'm not an eye, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If, if the whole body were just an eye, where's the hearing? And if the whole body were hearing, where's the smelling? Now look very closely, but now has God set the members? Who did it? God. Who did it? God. Who's the one setting the members? God. It's God that did it. So if you're here, who sent you here? God. Who placed you here? God. Who's going to be the one to give you the, the, the gift? God. And who's going to profit from that gift? God. Say it again. God. God will profit from it, but what's the who's profiting? Everybody. 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 Stay with me, guys. God gives the gift, and the reason he gives the gift is to profit everybody. Amen. We all grow from that gift that's in you. Yeah. We're all strengthened by that gift that is in you. Last night I said every one of you is profitable. Yeah. Every one of you is precious in the sight of God, and you're of necessity. Amen. If God wanted to this morning to give the gift of healing through somebody that's not here and they're not here, now what? Yeah. Could there have been a miraculous healing had that person been here? Yeah. Yeah. But couldn't God say, well, they're not here. I'll use somebody else. Absolutely. Yeah. And he does it all the time. Praise God. Because people forsake the assembly quite often. And if God wanted to use them, they're not here. Yeah. That's why it's important that we're here. Yeah. If people yeah. could understand, hey, brother or sister, we missed you last Sunday. Yeah. Don't, don't beat them down because they weren't here. Let them know how valuable they are. Amen. We miss your presence because you're a valuable person in the body of Christ. Amen. You're needed. I need you in my life. Yeah. I know you had things going on at home. I get that the week was very busy. I understand. But we sure miss the presence of God in your life. Amen. Some people call up where you at. Backsliders didn't show up. <laughs> Oh, no, the pastor's calling us to wear us out because he wasn't in church. <laughs> He's not calling you to wear you out. You're valuable. That's right. Not to him. He doesn't need you here. It's not going to make him look any better. It's because he understands the value of the body being collectively together. And guys, we all need that same mindset. Right. That way when I get up on Sunday and I feel tired and don't feel like going in, I want to just kick back for the day. Something God wants to do is going to be missing. Please hear this this morning. God distributes and he does it to profit the whole body. And if I'm not here, I'm not profiting the whole body and something's going to lack. Yeah. Stay with me. Amen. Verse 18. But now God has set the members, every one of them in the body as it pleases him. This is good. This is good. Y'all with me? Yeah. He's creating. This is good. Yeah. This is good. It pleases the Father. How many want to be pleasing to the Father? Yes. Well, you can't. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Amen. Right. So how's faith come? Amen. And here it comes. Amen. What are we doing now? Hearing. Hearing. My God, please. Hey, let's please God. Amen. Hear what he's saying. It's important that we gather together. 
Hebrews 10 said we ought to do it more and more as we see the day approaching. Encouraging one another, exhorting one another, and provoking one another unto love and good works. So it pleases the Father when He sets the members in the body and we're all together in that fellowship. Verse 19. And if they were all one member, then where is the body? But now are they many members, yet one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need them. Just let them stay home. I don't need them. It's not what the Word of God says, right? Or again, to the head, to the feet. I don't need you. The head needs the feet. The eye needs the hand. Yeah. Verse 22. Much more those members of the body. Read this closely with me. Pastor, read this. Because I want you to catch this. I was reading it the other day. I was like, wow. Verse 22. Nay, I'm reading King James. Maybe you're reading something else. Nay, much more those members of the body. Which seem to be more feeble than necessary. Amen. Now read that close. It's, it says, which seem. Yeah. That's the way I think. Yeah. <laughs> I think they're not that necessary. <laughs> but the Bible says right here, those members of the body which seem to be more feeble or weaker. And that ain't weaker as in you're just pathetic. That just means you're just a, a weaker vessel. There's a lot of places in me I'm weak. And when I'm weak, he's strong. Yeah. But they're of necessity. And look at verse 23. And those members of the body, which we, we think to be less honorable. How many times have you looked at another church member and I thought, it's, it's good that we don't think too, too much. Because our thoughts are not right. Let's have the mind of God. Let's let his thoughts be our thoughts. For the member that we think to be less honorable. God says upon these. We bestow more abundant honor. Well you know. I'm not a Sunday school teacher. I come into the church all the time. I just vacuum this carpet. Now the Sunday school teacher might look at the carpet vacuumer and say well. We think they're less honorable. Because they're not teaching Sunday school. They're just vacuuming the floor. We think they're less honorable. Well, God says upon these we bestow more abundant honor. Yeah. And our uncomely parts, I looked that word up. Everybody ever seen that word uncomely? And go, what in the world does that mean? Our uncomely parts. Have more abundant comment. That means the parts of the body that don't look like they've got it all going on. They don't look so well. They may look a little clumsy. They may not have it all sorted out. Those parts have more abundant comeliness on them. For our comely parts have no need. But God has tempered the body. Fashioned it. Having given more abundant honor to the part which lacks. Come on, guys. Yep. Isn't it amazing how God does the opposite of what we think? Amen. You know, and I know there's many passages saying that we, could, we should honor the leadership and honor the ones that are feeding you. I get that. But even in the whole body, just because the pastor has the gift of the pastor, does that make him any more special than a person that has another gift? Because God doesn't show an abundance of favor towards one than another. That's right. He loved on Judas, which was a devil from the beginning, washed his feet, and loved him equally the same as he did John and Peter and James. Yeah. And the rest of the disciples. Yeah. Verse 25. That there should be no division in the body. But that the members, that's us, should have the same Care one for another. Amen. I don't care what God is doing through your life. It is absolutely of preciousness. Yeah. How about that word? Yeah, go ahead, brother. It is precious to God. 
It is valuable to God. Amen. You're valuable to this body. Calvary Church this morning, please hear the voice of God. You're valuable in the kingdom of God. You're a trophy of the Lord Jesus Christ. And God has set every member according as he wills into this assembled body. And you're precious. And he's bragging, not only in this room, but to that world out there. Look what I can do through somebody that's weak. Look at what I can do through an ignorant and unlearned fisherman. Look what I can do with a person that was stooped on drugs and alcohol and sexual immorality. Look what I can take a person and take something that's dead and bring it to life. And then pour power through that life to lay hands on the sick yeah. that they shall recover. Hallelujah. Amen. My God. Only God can do that. Amen. And it pleased God. Yeah, and he right. said, this is good. <laughs> Amen. Because you can't do it. Jesus. But God can. Yeah, he can. With God, all things are possible. Amen. Aren't you glad for the Lord this morning? Amen. Aren't you glad He's chosen to use you? Yes. Yes. Do you believe it this morning? Amen. If you do, then from this day forward, you're going to look forward to the way God is going to use you. Yeah. I'm weak. Hallelujah. That's the ones God's looking for. Amen. He don't need a strong person. He's looking for the weak. Amen. He's looking for the broken. He's looking for the ones that don't think they're all that in a bag of chips. Yeah. He's all that. Amen. He's all that. Verse 26, and whether one member suffers, the members all suffer with that one member. Our one member is honored. We all rejoice with the one that's being honored. We're, 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 we're having Pastors Appreciation Month. And I praise God for our pastors. And look, we're honoring our pastors. It's a particular time we honor. And we're going to honor and we're going to rejoice with that pastor. Now you are the body of Christ. Members in particularly. And God has set some in the church. First apostles. Prophets. Thirdly teachers. After that miracles. Gifts of healing. Helps. Governments. Different types of tongues. Are all apostles. Are all prophets. Are all teachers. Are all workers of miracles. Have all the same gifts. Have all the gifts of healing. Do all speak with tongues. Do, do all interpret but covet earnestly the best gift. Yeah. Covet the best gift. And yet I show you a more and excellent way. And if you go into chapter 13 of 1 Corinthians, it talks about love. Because I'm going to tell you right now, that is the greatest gift that could ever be seen in the body of Christ. Amen. We look earnestly and we ask our Lord, I want you to use me in the body. I want to be a particular member that you can manifest your life to and bring something through me that the world can look upon this body of Jesus Christ as he has assembled him in Eupora, Mississippi in this particular group of congregation right here. When we walk out, people are going to see the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. If people could crawl up and look into these windows, they would see the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. On the day of Pentecost, when those 3,000 members, came, souls, came into that kingdom and began to become members of the body of Christ, people were looking in. They didn't have a wall. It was an open area where everybody could look in on it. That's where they were making a mockery. These guys must be drunk. No, 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 they're not drunk. This is what the prophet Joel prophesied, and you are eyewitnesses of that. And they were looking in on them. And then all of a sudden, he saw all those people. Uh, everywhere that they went, they were gathered together. The town could see. They're staying steadfast in the apostle doctrine. They're breaking bread together. Amen. They're, 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 they're praying over one another. They're yes. praising God together. So yes. Somebody has a need that they're selling their goods to make that happen so that member doesn't lie. And, and, and the world was looking upon that. And God added to the church daily. Such that would be saved, people were amazed. They were gazing on a picture, like we would look out and stand on the pinnacle and look at all the beautiful uh, creation that God created. That world is looking at the body of Christ like that. Amen. Or are they? Or are they? God help us. 
You'll never fix yourself, guys. This is sobering for me to preach it. But I know the one that can make this all happen. Yeah. Because he is the one that is making it happen. Amen. You're not going to try to do something that God is not doing in you. He'll just do it and give you grace to continue to do it. Amen. And you can be whatever God wants you to be. Amen. I was a landscape designer and contractor for 22 years of my life as a preacher, a landscaper. A preacher slash landscaper. And that's what I did for 22 years. I was a lost man in the beginning. I didn't graduate from school. I don't have a diploma to this day. I didn't go to college. Nobody in my family did landscape work. Nobody in my family was an artist. But God took a lost man and gave a talent to me. Amen. I was created in the image of God and I could literally create something. Yeah. I didn't know that I could do that, but God said, I've done something. I didn't even know God. And God just showed me. How did I do that? I got married, landscaped my first house. Everybody wants to know who did it. <laughs> you <laughs> <laughs> I did it. And Tammy's like, I know. <laughs> no, you didn't. I did it. <laughs> All right, now you see how the perversion of sin comes in. God made you a wonderful creator. But then we take all the, the credit for it. Yes. On, on my logo, it was Live Oak Landscape. All right? And, and then, you know, they put little slogans on things. It's an eye catcher. Mine was the Picasso of plenty. <laughs> How arrogant is that? <laughs> hey, I was the man. I, I just thought I was the best landscape designer on the planet. And I was. <laughs> In all my pride, you can see it. The Picasso of plenty. <laughs> and so when I would go get a sales pitch on somebody, I would use this. How you doing, Jeff Lee? Just come here. Anybody doing your work? Nope. Hey, we'd like to hire you to do it. Just sit down and start talking about all the things that I'm going to do. And I said, look, I'm going to draw you something up. I'm going to sketch it all out. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you a price. And I would tell the man, the woman's like, landscape. And the guy's like, come to me call me. <laughs> of course. And so the husband would be there at the end. So I'm dealing with the woman the whole time. Trying to sort out what she wants. And then once we come to what we're going to do here, I'm the architect. Y'all understand that? God is the ultimate. I had a form of architectural abilities that God gave me as a lost man. So I would sit and talk to the people and I'd say, look, I'm going to do all this for you. This is going to be the price. And I'd see the guy kind of like, uh, I said, well, look, I promise you, you're going to love this landscape job. And I would make a smart, like, funny comment like this. If your wife doesn't need duct tape wrapped around her head, keep her jaw from hitting the floor, don't pay me. <laughs> and Rose, I had to get a handshake right away. <laughs> and I knew I had Rose. Because I thought I was the man. I knew I was going to make them happy. And I said, by the way, if you don't have skid marks in the front of your house in the first week, from everybody stopping, gazing at the Picasso of landscape, <laughs> you call me up. I said, I guarantee you, people stop it out in front of your house every day. And they're going to knock on your door and say, hey, who did your red escape? They're going to be like, Jeff Lee did it. <laughs> <laughs> Arrogant and prideful, I did it. I'm just telling you how I was as a lost man. Mm -hmm. I never gave God that credit. But I was the man, okay, in my own world, in my own mind. But I did a lot of jobs. I made a lot of people happy. And I supported my family with that. But I was the landscape designer. So when I would go into a house and I'd look at the way it does, the first things I would look at as the designer is I would look at the house shape. And then I would look at the way the concrete was laid out. I would look at the front door because everything that you want to do, you want everything to pull your eyes to the entrance of that home. All right? And we want to accent the home and we want to pull everybody's focus in on the home. All right? So I would look at all those things and that would determine how much sun does it get. You know, when does the sun come up? When does the sun go down? Which areas are more moist than others? Do you have valleys coming down your house? So if you dump a lot of water, you put a plant in there that don't take a lot of water, it's going to kill it, right? So I not only had to, I had to have the ability to design, I had to have the ability to put the proper plants in the right place. All right? And everything accents everything. So when you have a big house, you want to accent it with big trees. And you want everything to fall down from tall to short all the way to the street. So when you're standing at the street with your er to check out the landscape job, everything flows perfectly up to magnify the home. Y'all with me? So imagine the home being Jesus Christ. 
Everything we do in this life is to magnify Him. Amen. And God is the only one that can magnify Jesus Christ. Right. The Holy Spirit is the one that does that. All right? So I would take in my abilities to, um, to, to, to create a landscape project for this home. Everything, so I go home and I begin to draw. I'm going to put rocks here, put a big boulder here, and in the front of the boulder, I'm going to put some little barrel covers. I'm going to put some lantana, put some irises behind it on the left side. Then behind that, I'm going to put a big tree up there, and I'm going to put it to the left of the window, and I'm going to put another big tree to match on this side to the, to the, to the, or to the right, to the left of the window. And then down up underneath that, we're going to put a walk pad that cuts through, and I'm going to put some little bitty mondo grass ground covers all through the rocks to accent the big giant flagstone rocks. Then we're going to put the green lawn all the way down to the curb. And when people stand back, wow, it's going to look good. Professional. We're going to go up, sell my job, and I want it. Now it's time to, to execute the job, right? So as the architect, I would go and I would purchase all the plants that I had in my head. And I would begin to, on that project, lot number 32, uh, you know, University Club uh, in, in, in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, go to that project. And I would begin to till the ground, build the beds, put the rocks in, put the trees in, and put it all together. And when I would get through and come in with the lawn to finish us off, we're working our way out, right? Put all the landscape uh, irrigation in, and I'm like, you know what, we're going to exit this thing, so I'm going to sell them a, lens, uh, a lighting project. I said, man, your landscape's looking really good. Y'all can see it coming together. Before I put that mulch on there, how about we throw a few floodlights in there? And at nighttime, boom, it's going to be fun. Everybody's going to be able to slam on their brakes at night. Yeah, let's do it. Put it in there, so I'll do the job, make some more money, right? I was lost. That's what I did for a living. I want to make money. So I used all of my creative abilities to bring, you know, a, a self-exaltation. So when I got through with the landscape project, I would sit back, Timmy and I would look at it and go, wow, that looks really good. They're going to love it. And then they would come, they would watch the HGTV, and they'd come, they pull the thing back, and everybody looks at their new house, and I was like, ah. So the people would come and they'd see the finished product. And, the, and the, of course, the homeowner, the guy would be like, dude, that looks really good. Shh, there's your money. And I'm like, ching, one another. But everybody would come by that house. And I'd get a phone call next week and say, dude, you're right. People have been stopping. I've got three people that are building houses down the road that have stopped here and said, who did your landscape project? And I gave them your card because I'd give them a handful of cards because the, the customers were my best sellers and I didn't pay for them. So when I get through the project, everything was set in order. Everything enhanced everything. So what I'm trying to go with this is, as an architect with the landscape, that's what God does with his church. And he places every individual as it pleases him so that when the world looks at the landscape project, we can look at this. we got trees on both sides. we got the pulpit here. They're going to put something nice up on these two blank walls. you got the middle here for the overhead. you got the drums. you got the piano. you got the stairs coming down into the carpet. And everything looks really good. And you keep backing up. You see all the members of the church all together in one accord. Everybody's members of one another. And if someone were to come through or look through that window there, they would slam on their brakes and go, oh, my goodness. Look at that church building. No, no. They're going to say, oh my goodness. Look how those people are caring one for another. Amen. And when the body of Christ is out into the world, and that body's functioning, one joint supplying the next, everybody acts it and everybody, because you're functioning like God has placed you in the body of Christ. Amen. The skid marks are going to happen. Yeah. The duct tape is going to be needed by yeah. everybody in the world. I can't believe the love that's coming from those people. Yeah. I've been around in religious churches all my life, and I can name every denomination that's out there. But I've never seen love like I'm seeing now. Now we're seeing the function of the body of Christ in the world like God orchestrated it to be. Amen. And so I'm born again now. I don't landscape no more. I took the Picasso planning off because I thought it was so arrogant and vain. And I'm born again. I'm not that prideful guy anymore. But I give all pride. And I'm proud, I can say, in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord who orchestrates his church. Amen. And as I looked on this last thing I'm going to say, when I looked on that, and I looked at the way those plants, as God began to give me a vision about the body of Christ and how it functioned through the landscape, because that's what I did. Do you know that I never saw a ground cover griping and complaining because he wasn't a tree? 
I never saw the lantana, who was only down here, with the butterflies flying around it, look up at these big famosa zellies and go, really? Did you have to put me in front of this big giant bush? <laughs> Nobody notices me. All they notice is the butterflies. But if, hey, if it wasn't for me, the butterflies wouldn't be here. What about me? And the big is going, shut up. <laughs> They're looking at me. They're looking at me, butterflies. You're giving attention to the land of Santa Stop. No, never see that. But I'm going to tell you what, if you went there, you took that lantana out, you took all that ground cover out of there, the rest of that job was not good with it. But every piece that was put in strategically by the architect was perfectly done. Amen. So the whole picture is beautiful. Amen. That is what God has done in your life as a born again believer. Would you stand with me this morning for the Kyle Cushman? This is what God has orchestrated in his church, his body, his members. And I want you to ask God this morning as we gather in these altars. And I challenge everybody to come. You know why we say come down to the altars? Can I tell you why we do that? You can make an altar at your seat. That's no problem. But a lot of times when I used to make an altar at my seat, and I'm not judging you, I would just sit there and I'd be like, okay, I'm ready to go home. Or, all right, I heard God speak, but I'm hungry. Or I would sit in my seat and, you know, I'd become comfortable. And, and then my mind would just begin to wonder. You know, you know when, we, when we say, hey guys, let's make this an altar up here this morning. You know what it does? It gets me out of my comfort zone. It gets me out of where I feel comfortable. And I just find a place. Make it along the wall if you want. But we're going to gather up here in the front. We did it this morning earlier. And it's wonderful just step out. What are we asking God this morning? God, I know that you have strategically put my life in this body. As it pleases you and is how it's going to bring a profit to the entire body. I want my life to be that. And Lord, at any given moment, Lord, if you want to put the gift of prophecy through me, God, do it. If you want to put the gift of healing through my life, do it. If, if you want to use me, God, to give a word of wisdom, Lord, I want to do it. A, a few people did it this morning from this pulpit. And God, I, I pray that your, your giftings would, would so function. And Lord, that I wouldn't be jealous of somebody else's gifts. That, that I wouldn't be jealous of other people. Just tell me this morning, God, I just want whatever you want. You want to make me a ground cover, God, I'm all right with that. And I know that you honor that small part as much as you do the big part. And God, it doesn't matter to me because I just want to be who you created me to be. If I'm just a bug in the jungle and I'm not a big mountain, I'm all right with that, God. I just want to praise you and I want to worship you in that gift that you would be glorified, that people's jaws would drop when they see you, God, when they see your function and your gift among your body bringing strength and bringing everybody's mindset and their eyes upon Jesus in this hour, God. Would you do it through my life today, God? Lord, would you give me the greatest gift of love? Perfect that love within me, God. Because your word says that the people will know that we're disciples by our love one for another. God, the more excellent gift, that gift of love above everything, God, baptizes in a fresh feeling of your love this morning, God. And let us look on others greater than we would look upon our own lives, God. We would, we would acknowledge the ones around us. We would help wash one another's feet, God. We love you this morning, Jesus. Father, have your way. Have your way in this altar in my life. Have your way in this altar in my life, God. Oh, we love you, Jesus. We thank you, God, for your mercy and your grace. Thank you. Church, I love you this morning. I'm so thankful for what God's doing in your life.